I've been using the MX Creative Console for almost nine months now, and I primarily edit music videos and YouTube videos over in Final Cut Pro. Just last month, Logitech updated their Final Cut Pro plugin, and I wanna show you all how I'm using it to tighten up my editing game. Firstly, I love that when you buy this Creative Console, it comes with three months free of Adobe Creative Cloud All Apps memberships. You're pretty much getting the console for free if you've already been using Adobe. Let's jump into Final Cut, and let me show you how I got my MX keypad and my MX dial pad set up for editing music videos or YouTube videos. Just let me show you what my button layouts are and how it's helping me with editing. Got the app open. First and foremost is I have my trim to start and trim to end in case I'm editing a YouTube video. Basically, if I'm going through my footage and I'm chopping down a talking head, I can just click on the clip that I'm going through and I can hit trim to start and it'll delete all the negative space before the point that I wanted to cut. Then if I drag forward a little bit and I want to cut it there, I just hit blade at playhead, which is right there in the middle of my, uh, keypad. Then I just hit play over here on my dial pad. And then when I get to the point where I'm good and I want to cut the clip again, I just highlight it and do trim to start. And then I can drag that clip back. Trim to start, blade at playhead. I'm cutting down a lot of clips all the time. So these are like at the top of my list for the keypad. Then sometimes I want to jump back and forth from previous clips or the next clip. I have that on each side of the playhead, previous clip, next clip. I can just hit this and it'll jump to the next clip for me. Sometimes I like jumping up and down my timeline like that. So those are very important for me to have on each side of my keypad. Right in the middle, I got cut. So let's just say I'm going through a music video and I don't like this clip. I can easily just hit cut and it just cuts it. Next down at the lower left side is add basic title. I just click this button and it adds a basic title. And if I'm using titles for YouTube videos or even like a music video, I can do one title. I can add two titles. I can do as many as I want right here. It's so quick. And rather than having to click the titles and then go to titles and then drag up to basic title and then drag it in like that. It just takes too long. This is making it much faster for me. If I'm coming through my timeline and I want to quickly copy this clip, I have copy as the bottom center and then I can come here and hit paste as connected so I can paste clips basically wherever I want to quickly with a copy and paste. Come click this, copy, paste. It's just very quick to have it right on this console. So that's my first page. I got trims and cuts. I have jump to clips and cut clips. These are pretty important to me when I'm editing down like YouTube videos and even music videos. So I have all these on the first page, but I do have four pages set up. I'll go through real quick and show you. On my second page, I have read times and read time custom speed. Now what this means is if I have shot a video at 60 frames per second or 100 20 frames per second and I need to quickly conform them back to the proper speed of my timeline. So if I'm shooting a 24 frames per second timeline and I shot in 60 frames per second, then I need to change the speed of a, that 60 frames per second clip to 40% to make it slow down. So I've put it right here on the second page. I can click this and it'll change the speed of that clip to 40 instantly for me. If it's shot in 120 frames per second, I can easily click the read time to 80 and that will change the speed to 80%. Or if I want to bring it back to 100 real quick, I could just hit this read time to 100. So I have it all set up for 60s, 120s, and just bringing it back to a regular speed. Now, if I'm shooting a music video and maybe I shot a clip in 48 frames per second or 72 frames per second, then I can easily just highlight a clip like this and I can hit retime custom speed and then go to the percentage that I want specifically. Gotta have that for my music video stuff. That's very important. Okay, right here, I'm gonna select these clips. I'm gonna go to my next page. I'm gonna hit create storyline. That's also a button on my third page. When I'm editing down music videos, I typically put my clip for a performance into a storyline and then I go through and I cut out all the bad parts. But in order to get those clips out of the storyline without messing up the timing of the rest of that clip, as you can see, I just deleted that. It pulls everything back. I have lift from spine set here on the second page in the middle so I can just easily highlight a clip that I don't like in a music video performance and hit lift from spine and then go back to the front page and hit cut delete. Now that is completely out of that little storyline and I could go through and take out all the bad parts of a performance out of a music video Video or even out of like B-roll clips if I'm editing down like a YouTube video. Also, when I'm using my dial pad, I have it set to navigate one frame. So if I just turn this thing, it'll keep navigating up and down the timeline by one frame. But sometimes it's a little too slow and it, I want it to go faster. So I have navigate 10 frames. You just click that so it highlights it and then you can scroll 10 frames at a time with the dial pad, which is just convenient for me sometimes. Next up, I have add marker at the bottom middle of the second page. When I'm editing a music video, sometimes I know that I want a specific B-roll clip to go there or even in a YouTube video. If I want B-roll to go at a specific spot and I know it's like right here, I could easily just come 
here and click add marker so I can remember, okay, I needed to put B-roll at that spot. Over here on the right side of my keypad, I have copy attributes and paste all attributes. So if I have like a color grade that is on a clip, let's just say I'm color grading a music video, I can easily click color attributes and then come and drop it over here. I can hit paste attributes. So real quick, let's color grade this clip. And the easy way to do that is to come over here to the coloring tab. Instead of doing a single um, color wheel at a time, you can hit view and do all wheels. And the beautiful thing about this is over here on the dial pad, I can easily click this button right here for my actions ring and I have a bunch of things set up like temperature and tint. So if I just put my um, mouse over top of this, I can go and just scroll and make it more warm or I can make it more cool just by scrolling this dial wheel. Now we can come to tint, we can bring in a greenish tint or we can bring in a magenta, I think right there's cool. I can easily hold this over top of the shadows, the mid tones and the highlights and change things up so I can make it crushed, I can lighten it up. I can click the action ring and I can just color grade this clip from scratch. Another really cool thing is I can bring it in full screen so I can see my entire image and I can easily click that action ring again and I can control the color grading experience while I'm looking at the video big so I can see it more in depth and be more precise with how I'm color grading. So I can bring these shadow, I mean those midtones down, bring the shadows up a little bit, crunch them down just a tad bit right there. I like that you can go into full screen mode on a clip and then bring up this action ring and be able to just hover and color grade like that. So real quick, if I want to go from my default layout like this setup, I can click the action ring and I can click this and I'll be into color mode where I can change this to the two view with my vector scope and the Luma and I can really get color grading. Let's just say I'm happy with it right there. Exit that out, hit the action ring again, back to default mode and I can start editing again. Back to my keypad. Now that I did a little color grade using the dial pad, I can easily hit copy attributes, come to the next clip and hit paste all attributes. And it's that quick. Once I got the color grade or any attributes on a clip, I got these buttons set up where I can just hit copy, come to this and hit paste. I love having that set up right there because when I'm editing music videos or even YouTube videos, I'm like copying and pasting attributes from different clips or color grades and things like that all the time. So it's easy to have it right there. I don't have to do like command C and shift command V to paste it like I would on the keyboard. It's just straight up one hit buttons. Okay, let's go back. Let's hit lift from spine. Let's lift these two clips. No, let's lift all three of these out of this. And then let's go back, hit cut. Highlight these two clips right here. Let's come to the third page, I can create a compound clip easily if I've done some effects or keyframe into two clips in a music video and I want to just make it into one clip. Then if I want to jog backwards, I got it where I can play the video backwards. If I want to jog forwards, I can push this button. I can push it twice to go two times the speed. Helps me out a lot when I'm editing down a talking head YouTube video and I want to go back and make sure things look right. I can run it at double speed or even faster than that if I don't want to take up a lot of time while reviewing what I've already chopped down. On my fourth page, I don't have much yet and I'm still like learning learning these and seeing what I use the most and where it needs to be to be efficient because some of these pages, some stuff could probably be on a closer page and some stuff a further back page. Kind of learning and experimenting right now, but the fact that I can set things for one place is really cool. So back here on this last page, let's just say I got these two clips right here set up. Um, let's come back. Let's hit storyline. This is a music video, right? We're just pretending. So go back to the last page. Let's click and highlight here. I can hit add transition and it'll automatically add my default transition, which if I hit play real quick, that's what I have as my default transition. Last but not least, I'm still figuring out other stuff that I like using, but I like having this button right here set to open folder. And the folder that I have it open is my SSD. So I just push it and it brings me right here to my SSD where I can pull music video clips or I can pull YouTube video clips. I can go right into that folder easily and drag those into my project. It just makes it quick, fast, and efficient for me. And this is all gonna change as I keep using the uh, MX Creative Console. So right now I love the MX Creative Console. It's helping me speed up my editing flow. I like being able to push one button as opposed to multiple buttons on my keyboard for shortcuts. It's also continuously growing and evolving. So I know it's just going to get better and better and better. So shout out to Logitech for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys. And if you have any other questions about this MX Creative Console or how I'm using it for my personal layouts, drop those questions down below. Also, if you want more details on the MX Creative Console, check this video out and I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stick around to the channel if you want to see more updates on the MX Creative Console. I'll be using it for the rest of the year. Peace.